Back in for another episode of our Stock Watch series here on Battery Power. Corey McCartney, along with Grant McCauley and Grant Pitching, was the commodity the Braves loaded up on at the beginning of the rebuild in the winter of 2014. Among all those arms, an ace had to emerge. And the ace that was promised left little doubt that he's ready to carry that label. Max Freed was on the mound with a gem. His Atlanta clinched the World Series title, putting the cap on what was a really sensational year for the left-hander. No two ways about it. And we knew when they went into that rebuild and they had so much focus on pitching that if you kept drafting that quantity and hopefully the quality that you were getting of those prospects, that somebody was going to be able to become that front of the rotation starter, maybe a couple of those, then other guys were going to fall in behind there and you're going to build the layers of quality depth that you need. I think that's something we can discuss about guys that have stepped up and been a big part of what the Braves have done since 2018 of the homegrown variety, but we'll get to that. The focus really right here right now is on the guy that pitched one of the biggest games in franchise history, did so after having his ankle stepped on in the first inning of what I thought could just be a disastrous turn of events. It was anything but that, and it was more of what Max Fried has shown the Braves over the past three years since joining the starting rotation. This is a guy who has brought it every fifth day as the Braves have needed, and while there's been a lot of I'll say ups and downs and some comings and goings in the rest of the rotation since 2018. Max Fried has been the guy, the fixture that the Braves have built their rotation around. And I don't see that changing going into 2022. So Fried posted a 3.04 ERA in 28 starts in 2021, a career best 3.8 fan graph war. Uh, but the season was truly about the second half. After the All-Star mm -hmm. break, he led the majors with a 1.74 ERA, was tied with Max Scherzer for the best whip at 0.85. The postseason did have its concerning moments. You mentioned getting stepped on, but it, obviously it was free that spun that six scoreless innings in game six of the World Series to help the Braves claim that title. Winner of a second straight gold glove and what may be the last Silver Slugger award that will ever be given <laughs> strictly to the position of pitcher. Mm -hmm. Grant, what else did you see from him in 2021 that you want to see carry into 22 and beyond? Well, I'll throw out a few stats for you because I think just more of the same is what I want to see from Max Fried. And we'll kind of get to it, I'm sure, by the end of what it is in 2022 he can do that maybe could take him to that next level. But as I looked at what made Max Fried so good in 2021 and really for the past three seasons overall, I mean, this is a guy who is the second Braves pitcher to put up a five war or better season in the last decade, joining Mike Soroka, a guy the Braves would love to see join Max Fried and be part of that a bounty of pitching prospects from the rebuild that become really what Max Fried has already become. But as I dug a little bit deeper on what this guy was doing, that sensational second half put him in some pretty elite company. He was top 10 among MLB starters in fewest hits per nine inning. And he was also the, uh, there were two qualified starters in baseball that walked fewer batters per nine than Max Fried. And we're talking about two hundredths of a percentage point for both of them. So you could kind of chalk up another one for Freed there, and only two qualified starters in baseball allowed fewer home runs than Max Freed did per nine innings pitch. That's what all those rate stats tell me is this is a guy who does not allow many hits, doesn't walk many batters. He keeps the ball in the ballpark, and all of that combined has led to him being a very valuable starting pitcher, and now he's kind of become big game Max Freed because it doesn't get much bigger than closing out the World Series for your club. Even if there were some low points in the postseason in which some things just simply didn't go his way, I still think Max Freed stayed true to himself and was able to make some small adjustments, not major adjustments, some small adjustments to what he was doing that led to that success in game six. And I'm glad that he had, I think, the a belief in himself and what he does to go out there and execute and execute is what he did. And he put the Astros away. So let's not forget that Freed did get off to a very forgettable start in 2021. He was roughed up by the Phillies, Nationals, the Marlins, and his first three starts had a 11-4-5 ERA that landed on the injured list with a hamstring injury. Uh, it looked like it could be a troubling year. I mean, we have to remember that Mike Soroka was lost for the season, but Freed bounced back in a big way. After the return on May 5th, he had a 2-4-4 ERA, a 3.09 FIP in 154 innings. That included a 1-3-6 ERA in August. 154 in September. That to me was really everything you need to know about him in 2021. He answered any and all questions in my mind. And this is no respect to Mike Soroka, who could well well be, you know, a, a extremely good major league pitcher sure. again if he can get back and certainly, him. you know, get back to that time. That time will tell on that. But I think he's really I think Freed is ready to be the defining pitcher of this generation for the Braves. And that being said, his 2021 wasn't perfect. So what are you looking to kind of get cleaned up or improved upon for the upcoming season? 
Well, there's one big thing that I'll circle, and it's being able to strike out more batters is really the only thing that I think is standing between Max Fried being a starting pitcher who is one of the best in the National League to perhaps becoming one of the best in all of Major League Baseball. When I say one of the best, I mean one of, say, the top two or three left-handers, one of, say, the top five or six overall starting pitchers. I do think that he has that capability, but it will be figuring out ways to perhaps miss a few more bats, some little tweaks that could get him back into that area that he was in 2019 when he was striking out nearly nine and a half batters per nine. It was over eight and a half last year, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. He is missing bats. I just feel like there's more there because I watched some of the streaks in which he gets into these, these runs where – nobody can touch him. And if he can find a few more of those, I think he's going to find himself taking another step forward in 2022 and just some food for thought. I know we're not big on the old pitcher wins as being the determining factor on starting pitchers value these days. That's changed a lot in the last probably three or more decades as we've gotten a little bit deeper into the stats to tell us what the game means. But I can tell you this, Max Fried is on the mound a lot when the Braves win. And in fact, he has a nearly 750 winning percentage at 38 and 13 since joining the starting rotation in 2019. That is pretty darn impressive. Only one pitcher in baseball has won more games than Max Fried over the last three seasons combined. And it's Garrett Cole of the Astros and then the Yankees. So when you talk about what Max Fried can do and what he has done and where he can go, Think about how many more games that Max Fried could win for the Braves, not just for himself, again, not for the pitcher win, but for this club. If he does take another step forward in 2022, that is very exciting. When you look at his uh, stat cast numbers for 2021, Fried's hard hit rate, his sweet spot percentage, barrel percentage, those were all up, which would be great if we were talking about him at the play, but we're talking about him on the mound. Uh, hitters had an expected weighted on base average of 322 on his four-seam fastball, 311 on his slider. Now, he's obviously got that curveball with a 198 expected weighted on base average that's always going to keep him within any at-bat. It may sound like I'm critiquing uh, Freed's arsenal here, but here's the thing. He lives in the strike zone. Obviously, you mentioned he doesn't miss his bats, maybe the rate that you want him to. He lives within the strike zone. Last year, he had a 52% uh, rate in the zone. And what you saw out of him in the World Series is the ability to flip the script at will. I mean, he yep. threw a four-seamer yep. or uh, sinker in 42 of his 74 pitches in game six. He got strikes on 30 of 42 fastballs. Only four of those fastballs against the Astros were uh, developed into a hard hit ball of 95 mile an hour or more. So I think what you want to see Freed do, and obviously we've had these conversations where we've seen Freed be elite, and you mentioned it. Is he going to be in those conversations where you're talking about those best couple left-handers in all of baseball? I think it's the ability to make those adjustments and sometimes make those on the fly that's really going yeah. to be the difference maker here. Did he learn from what happened in the postseason where you know he had a couple teams zero in on him Things weren't working right, and when it came down to it, he made the adjustments he needed to make. I think that's going to be the real factor, the thing I'm really watching from free that's going to decide how high the stock rises on him in 2022. Yeah, I mean, perhaps it's just a little bit of the old adage of pitching backwards and making those adjustments. The consistency is there. Again, as you mentioned, all of those things might have me a little bit more concerned if I saw rising rates year over year from him. But another X factor for this, really kind of an obvious factor, is the Braves have become a team that really has employed the shift to great results. Overall, defensively, the Braves are a sound ball club. I think that's another thing that helps out Max Fried and allows him to live in the strike zone a little bit more because, you know, plays behind you are going to be made. I think that's a little bit. I'm not making any excuses or critiques of him either because I love what the guy's doing. And I think you should take advantage of the things that are working for you. And on most nights, the Braves defense is working for those pitchers. We haven't even really discussed Freed at the plate. He slashed 273, 322, 327, three doubles, five RBI, the Silver Slugger Award winner. I mean, uh, there's going to be a lot of pitchers that you don't want to see, you know, go take at bats anymore. I'm sorry, Charlie Morton in your 50% strikeout rate from this past season. I don't want to see that. Freed, on the other hand, uh, you know, this is a guy that can swing the bat. And you you look at that select number of pitchers. We saw Zach Greinke get an uh, opportunity to be a pinch hitter in the, in the World Series. I think there's the potential that we may have not have seen the last of Max Fried have a bat in his hands. No, and think about this, and I'll keep it short because pitchers hitting is probably not going to give us the highest rated show of all time. But Max Fried is probably going to be searching for that home run until the day he hangs up those spikes. So if he gets a few more opportunities here or there to go up there and just put a great swing on a ball, 
Maybe it'll be Max Fried pinch hitter that gets that home run. We've already seen Max Fried pinch runner have a mad dash and really impress the Braves. He's an overall athlete and a real credit to the club anytime he's on the field. So very excited to see what he does, mostly on the mound, but perhaps at the plate in his future. Two questions with Freed. He's arbitration eligible. Could he be an extension candidate to buy out those remaining RB years? And for the second straight year, is he going to be the opening day starter? I think those are the things that I, I want to see. Live. Those are the answers that I kind of have out there, these questions that have to get answered with Freed uh, as we look towards opening days or anything in particular that you're looking out for uh, these next couple of months or whenever the lockout you know, is over and we kind of get a sense of when things are going to line up for the season. No, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Obviously, you'd love to know that you got Max Freed locked in for longer than just going to arbitration year over year. I think that that's something that the Braves should be focused on and I think are focused on to some extent, even if those talks haven't become substantial as of yet. But now would be a good time to maybe start working on that. I think Freed has shown you enough. Again, he's a winner. He's shown that. He's helped the Braves win the biggest games that you can win. And he has shown each and every year that he's here to stay. So I would look at that as a big part of what the Braves can be doing as they focus on keeping this winner together and keeping this window of contention open for as long as it possibly can be. And to answer your second question, if Max Fried's not the starter on opening day, I'd be very surprised. And if it's not him, maybe it's Charlie Morton just based on the old veteran. But if anybody's earned it, it's Max Fried, And I'd be more than happy to give him the ball on opening day and every fifth day thereafter for the next, I don't know, five, six seasons. Well, the answer to those questions lie ahead. And certainly we'll be here for every second of it here on Battery Power. So make sure you subscribe to the Talking Shop YouTube page, turn on those notifications and get those alerts every time we drop a new episode. Thanks for watching. I'm Corey McCartney. He's Graham McCauley. And we'll see you in next time, Braves country.